put myself in the safekeeping of your audience for tonight, uh, here, visiting, and those who are watching, and ask them if they really think that's what I do or what I'm like. And that the reason the questions come to me, all of them so far, is not just because of my sexual charisma. <laughs> um, but, but if it was that uh, all this, uh, the, the, this description of me is dogmatic and my only uh, description of others as being dogmatic was true, then I wouldn't be able to correct it in the time of this show. Christopher, just uh, getting to the point of why religion still resonates, here's a quote uh, from your book for you to reflect on. Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world. It is the spirit of a spiritless situation. This is the uh, opiate of the people, quotation goes on. Um, and it, and it, it goes on even more beautifully to say that... Um, <laughs> no, it's not from me. It's not from me. It, it goes on to say uh, that criticism of religion has plucked the flowers from the chain. Not so that men and women may wear the chain without consolation, but so that they may break the chain and cull the living flower. It's, it's from Karl Marx. It's the opening of the, his critique of Hegel's philosophy of right. It's the most misrepresented quotation probably of the 19th century. It's the one where he doesn't say religion is the opium of the people. But he does it's the one that shows that atheists are not dogmatists. But he does understand, essentially, in making that point, why religion yes. still resonates today. He, he understands why religion is ineradicable, why it's part of the human makeup and, and personality, and why um, it's the most interesting argument that we have, because it's the, it's the, it was our first attempt at philosophy, just as it was our first attempt at healthcare, cosmology, astronomy and so on. It's the, it's the argument that never goes stale. But I think one of the strengths of your book is that you do concede that religion is ineradicable. Oh, so yeah. given that reality, I mean, I come back to the point, why not drop the bagging and smearing and let's say the solvent is respectful public discourse. But you... We judge things by their fruits and if there be arguments which are put which are misconceived, then we talk that out. Okay, hang well, on, Father, you're, 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 you're the again. soul of charity, but I mean, who's been bagging and smearing? And you've said that twice. No. As if you're sitting there, our only protection against a wave of smearing and bashing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, I thought that if, as, as long as we have a civil conversation, we don't have to keep on saying that that's what we're doing. Okay, uh, in, this, in this civil conversation, we have an audience. We've got a gentleman up there with his hand up, and I'm going to come to you. This question's for Chris and for Waleed. Um, you, uh, Frank, sorry, Frank and Waleed, um, you said that we live in a pluralistic society, we're uh, a duality society. What is your views on gay marriage and, and why is it there seems to be such opposition from the Christian and Muslim <coughs> societies against it? Okay, we'll take a quick answer from Frank and Waleed on that. I've just finished a national human rights inquiry. We've heard about this constantly around the country. I would approach the issue of gay marriage uh, distinguishing two things. One, people of a religious disposition may have a view about what they call the sacramentality of marriage. I would see that as a separate question from the civil institution of marriage. Now, in terms of the civil institution of marriage, I think one of the welcome developments in Australia is we've got to the stage of saying that discrimination against people on the grounds of their sexuality should be wiped out completely and that we're a better society for that being the case. In terms of the next step, whether or not in civil law there should be a recognition of the bond between two men or two women as being the same as marriage as it's presently understood. The real issue, I think, is whether or not that decision is best made by our elected politicians or whether it's made by unelected judges. And I think at the moment in Australia the view has been that that should be a decision of our elected politicians. My own view is moving around the country I think that younger Australians, they don't see it as a problem. It's not an issue. I think for a lot of older Australians, it's still an issue. And guess what? A lot of them happen to be married. So in terms of a free and democratic society, for those who are civilly married, then we've got to bring them with, them, with us as we look at any change on that issue. All right, before I go to anyone else on that, uh, you're watching Q&A. Uh, we actually have a, a video question that's uh, going to... Uh, uh, I think in continue this discussion. We're watching Q&A. Remember, you can send your web or video questions to our website. The address is on the screen. Like this video from Joseph Bromley of Malmesbury, Victoria. Hello, comrades. Can we ever hope to live in a truly secular society when the religious maintain their ability to affect political discourse 
and decision-making on issues such as voluntary euthanasia, same-sex unions, abortion and discrimination in employment. Uh, Christopher, this won't mean anything to you, but uh, I was a bit distracted by that because he looks enormously like a young Malcolm Turnbull. I'll just repeat his question. <laughs> I was thinking Sid Barrett, actually. Can we ever hope to live in a truly secular society when the religions maintain their ability to affect political discourse and decision-making on issues like voluntary euthanasia, same-sex marriage, abortion and discrimination in employment? Wally Daly. Uh, I frankly don't understand the question. Well, I do literally understand the question, but I, I, there are assumptions embedded within it that I think need to be examined. I actually think a secular society implies the ability of religious arguments to enter the discourse. The idea of secularism, the reason for it coming into existence, was to open the public discourse to a range of views, religious, irreligious, and otherwise. It's about the separation of church and state. That is, it's about removing the levers of government, the levers of power, from an inst a religious institution like the church. That's a different thing from saying that arguments that have their grounding in some kind of religious commitment cannot be aired. That to me is actually an anti-secular position because what it's doing is it's saying here are the, uh, the, the approved modes of discourse, here are the approved arguments. The idea of, of a secular society is to say you come, if you want to come from a socialist perspective, if you want to come from a, a Christian perspective, an Islamic perspective, a Hindu perspective or some other perspective that as yet has not been conceived, fine and we'll sort that out in the, in the political process. I think to say, on euthanasia, religious people uh, are not allowed to comment as religious people is, is ridiculous and anti-secular and anti-liberal. Okay, Sally Warhart. I, I, I agree with everything Waleed said. If, if what the question was meant to ask was, you know, as meaning a you know, society without religion, then I'd say you want to be careful what you wish for and uh... He perhaps, he perhaps he's talking about a society without politicians who <laughs> are uh, expressly religious. Well and then therefore... maybe we should all be praying very hard for that. <laughs> I'm not sure. But you know, I mean you imagine... Or voting very hard for that's, it. That's right. I mean, the, the, and, I mean what Waleed said is absolutely true. Secularism means everybody can uh, get involved and it's, uh, I mean, it's a great thing about a country like this. Um, and, but, you know, you imagine back in time. I, I don't want to imagine a, uh, a, a world that never had Mozart or Bach in it, you know. You have to be careful what you ask. You're for. not religious, though. Why do you value religion? Because I think that I'm interested in, in, in what drives human beings, in what makes human beings human. Um, and, and I think there is obviously, whether you're religious or not, there is something in human beings that, um, that, 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 that passions and faith override reason in, in just about everything we do from we, we get up in the morning and we choose what to wear or you know that there's a, there's there's a lot that's going on in human behavior that is not that well thought out and in fact a lot of our reason is is in analysis it's after it's after the fact and um, i think that none the worse for that though no uh, well that's you need both you know though it's true there aren't many secular gothic cathedrals for example <laughs> But How, uh, Verdi, Verdi could write a beautiful... What do you call the Kremlin? Verdi could write a very, very good requiem without actually being a believer, but I don't think that John Donne could have written his sacred poetry not thinking, I don't really believe any of this. I mean, it's quite clear that there's, a, there's an instinct in all of us for the, for the numinous and the transcendent, you might say. I, I think you can have it without the supernatural. Um, in fact, I think you have to. Well, again, I couldn't agree more with, if I may call you, may I call you one in? Well, they, that that's what secular means. But um, in that case, I think it, uh, it, it, it behooves the religious to say what they genuinely mean. Now, Frank just talked about homosexuality as if the church had never condemned it as a mortal sin. Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. it's extraordinary. Um, I, I would not know that you were a member of the Society of Jesus, except that it was a very Jesuitical point you were making. <laughs> and concealed your main one. Like and and I'm sorry, well, it is the we... same. Islam says the same. You cannot be yeah. a good Muslim and publicly be a homosexual. Why don't